Good evening all, I Rap Steen of Lynn and Associates with your financial market wrap up. And this wrap up is for Thursday and we are now on the 14th of May, 2020. 5.55 p.m. Central Time. You know, I like doing these now a little bit after uh, the markets reopen at 5. And the reason is it gives us a little bit more to look at. So I'm not late. I've just decided that, hey, since I have the studio now in the house, it's not like I have to run home. You know, you do this all at work, then you got to render them. It's a whole different thing. I created today a special report on the gold market. Now I'm gonna start doing these on a regular basis on more markets, and I am gonna very shortly begin live webinars. Now that everything's fine physically, uh, I've got my energy back and I'm looking to really get going on different things. Today was an interesting day in that we, we had another big break in stocks, and then they decided to come back late in the day, and they just picked up momentum. So they're giving up a little bit of that momentum that they picked up, but the market bounced very nicely. We're seeing the silver gain on the gold market right now, copper up, the palladium market and platinum markets are both up. Energy markets got a bounce today as well. Bonds and notes, while they rallied strong, they're giving up a little bit tonight in the early trade. So let's take a look at where we're at. So far on a weekly basis, we have still not been able to get up to the 18 week moving average of closes on this chart. That's important. We also haven't broken back under this number. So where the market got up to, you know, there were so many people talking the 29 to 29.50 area would be resistance in the S&P, and they were right. It did, and the market has broken back from there, and it's trading right now around the 28.44 level. When we go to a daily bar chart, you can also see that this number up here, this 29.28, that was the 62 percentile bounce from this low. Now, it's measured from the high the market made right up here in March to the break low, that crash that we had, and here's the bounce that we've had in the market. And we seem to be stuck between the 50 percentile along with the 62 percent. When we look at the chart, this rally that began right about, you know, there's different areas to measure it. You certainly bottom there, but a rally that grabbed hold and held began back here, right here, and it finally gave ground the other day. Now you've got a pattern of a lower and low. You see that right, right here, there's the lower and low, and the higher high here. Okay, we've stepped out of a trend again. The market's fighting a battle at what number? Look at the 18-day average of closes. It was not strong enough to get up to either the 100-day average in the green or the 200-day average. The 200-day average is an awful lot of resistance. A lot of people would like to see the market over it the way it did in the NASDAQ. They would then get excited about the marketplace, but it hasn't done it. Instead, it fell back and it's looking at what I call that line in the sand without a trend at this point. What is else do you see? You see the market stuck in the Bollinger Band. See these black lines? 95% of the mark time, the market will trade within Bollinger Bands. 5% breaks out of them. Now, when they're going sideways, it's from there the breakout sets itself. Look back here. Look at how narrow they were, and then the breakout sets itself up. That is when that happens. So we're getting to the point where we're narrow enough to have another breakout of some type in the market. So my horns on my head, and they're there, they're looking at this and they're keeping an eye on what's going on. In terms of momentum, momentum has been pointing down. So I have a higher high, lower and low, no trends, stuck in the Bollinger Bands, and I'm looking for false moves within that because when you tighten up the bands, what happens is you get a lot of false breakouts within those bands. You, you just try the up, you don't get high enough, try the down. Notice they both didn't hit the band on either case. 
the NASDAQ has been where the strength is. Now, we know that the market's fallen in love with the tech stocks. We know the fangs have led the rally on the way up. And we know that people are still saying now, OK, I still like them a lot. Well, that's right. Higher lows and still in place, higher highs. You're correcting an overbought situation. When we lost the embedded reading, an embedded reading is when the red and the blue are going over 80, three days or more in a row. When you lose it, the way you did here, you typically drop back to the 18-day average of closes or the nearest other major average. Well, the hundreds here in the 18, so the closest is obviously the 18. You hadn't quite hit it yesterday. You got within three points of it. That's not quite hitting it. For good measure, it hit it today, and you can see what the market's doing. So it, that rule was satisfied. It also didn't drop back under this low. So the bull trend's still intact. And if we look at these numbers, one of the numbers has still got a seven in front of it. Any reading over 70, I consider overbought. So I'm still in an overbought condition that's in a correction phase, still in a bullish setup. The Dow is different. The Dow fell right to the lower Bollinger Band. My rule, and you've heard me say it to you over and over, the first time you hit a Bollinger Band, you did not hit it yesterday. You got to uh, 22,980. That's, remember, that's 80 points from 22,905. You hit it today, you bounced. That's my point. And you're still stuck in this narrow band. There's been no resolution of the market. At least in this market, unlike the S&P, you hit the number. So that's better than not hitting it, but you have a higher high and lower low. You have not broken out of anything. The market is no longer and by the way, I want to show you yesterday, you were not oversold. And I want to get right here, actually. There you are. You were oversold on Wednesday. Do you see that? You had a 27 reading. Now, you're not oversold with the bounce. And as we're into Friday's trade, and remember, we're already open for Friday trade, you're even further away. But again, you're not trending in this market. Russell, you made your run for the lower Bollinger Band. And you're not trending. You got a low, higher high, lower and low coming down here. How close did we get? Because I don't think I don't recall it hitting it. Uh, it got three points away. That's still pretty far away. It doesn't have to hit it, but it's not a trend. So that's my bigger problem. The market stepped out of the trend yesterday, right through here. And now you've got, as you can see, higher high, lower and low breakdown today, little bounce. I don't see in anything right there. In the VIX, the battlegrounds now the 18-day average of closes. When you made your first challenge back here of the Bollinger Band, you rallied back to the 18-day average. You hit it here, back there. You hadn't hit it all this time. I'd have to go way back, and I'm talking way back to the first of the year. But again, that's come into play. So I watch what that means in the marketplace, and we'll, we'll see. But at least I'm seeing that on the big breaks, the put writers have come back alive. In the T-bond, tell me that this isn't a narrow band like that pipe. And you're not going anywhere. Uh, the market gets in here. It's knocking on the door of being overbought. It doesn't follow through one way or the other. The trend is what? I'm going to argue the trend is higher and lows. If I come back where I left that arrow for you to see here, that was 118.24. Now, if we get up to today, the high was 182.2. So we made the higher high. And I wanted you to see it because it was hard for me to see. And you definitely did that. So you're in an uptrend. Supports back at the 180.22 area. I'd expect to see buying support, but it's the spinning action. And I've been around this type of action. It's not a money making type of action generally. Same thing in the 10 year note. You get into this and you're just spinning and you're looking for the breakout. I've learned to wait for the breakout to occur rather than play for it. It's too frustrating. And by the time you're looking for your buy, it's hit it, 
comes down, hits the other number, doesn't give you the opportunities. In the dollar index, you're in an uptrend that is already very overbought, higher lows, higher highs. I'm looking to see, can it get to the 187 or does it want to pull back towards the 100 level to find support again? But I'm not seeing, again, I'm in too much of that narrowness there to want to play. The euro currency was a huge disappointment. It had a shot the other day. It had set up higher lows, higher highs, a total failure on that. So now the market is back into no trend at all, oversold as can be. The Japanese yen is in a downtrend now. Lower highs, lower lows, resistance 93.50, right here. I think the pros will sell that number, but they'll have tight stops. Wouldn't surprise me if they have stops right over that last high. And they'll look to see, can the market make a run for the combination of the lower Bollinger Band at 92.69 down to the 92.65 level, the 100-day average and closes. Bitcoin, all I was looking on this pullback was would we fill the gap between this low right here and that high, and we exactly did it. And now the market can drift around a little bit. Those type of gaps often get filled. Most markets do not leave gaps on charts. When we take a look at Brent versus WTI, we got down to a differential yesterday of three and a quarter, now tonight we're adding back about 20 cents so far, but remember, I don't think Brent's doing much in the early evening. When we take a look at the Brent, you're sitting here with the market that's pretty flat, up 29 cents. Uh, is there a pattern to trade? Not really, you got a lower and low, higher high in an overbought market. WTI is in an uptrend. Higher lows, higher highs, but again, very overbought. It would be today the first attempt to get both numbers that make up the slow stochastic over 80. They weren't there on the close on Thursday. In the gasoline market, I'm looking for the market to give a failure signal up in this general area. So I'm just watching, and this is the June, by the way, that I've got up here. But uh, July can be another contract that you're looking at. But this is an area where, because you lost the embedded reading, you often get a break back towards the 18-day average. Curious to see if that happens. Uh, I'm wrong if the market were to get over 98.20. And last, in the nat gas, you had spent a couple of days under the lower Bollinger Band, and you've gotten your bounce. Now, that yesterday we had closed at the 188.40 under it, so it was three days in a row, and no surprise to get your bounce back over it uh, that's going on right now. So not a surprise to me at all there. And I'm going to repeat. This type of big break generally gives a bounce out of it. You get all these wild swings in this market right now. The uh, IEA report did not show as big a build as the market thought it would. So you got a little bounce out of the market and you're doing better tonight. Are we gonna embed though? That's what I'm watching. Both numbers are under 20 tonight. Both were under 20 yesterday. So you can't do it today. The day before you were not, as you'll see. It can happen Monday if the market doesn't close real strong today. So we'll see what happens there. Want to remind you that my metal report is up. I go through the monthly charts and gold we're talking. The monthly chart, the weekly chart, and then I bring into the August gold. And in the gold, I'm giving you an idea as to what I'm seeing. I then take you into the seasonal charts as well. And in those seasonal charts, I'm going to show you the five-year historical pattern, the 15 and the 30. Then I'm going to walk you into bull and bear years. I think you'd agree we're in a bull market, and I, I can prove that, and I do so in these charts to show that you've been in one actually about five years. You know, a lot of traders will say, what's he saying? You go and you look at what I'm saying. You were 1047 five years ago, and you just look how the market keeps gradually churning higher. It didn't happen with the COVID. It's been happening over a five-year period. Now with all the printing of money, what's going on, industry hurt, what happens? There's a negative for gold. Every time the stock market takes a hit, because gold has gone up so much over these years, 
People sell what they have money in that they've made money if that's the case, and they use that to cover other positions and or hold on to them. And away you go. So it's a back and forth action. I think you'll find it interesting. Go to our website, www.irapstein.com. Under the word research, you'll see special gold report. Uh, if you have trouble, give my staff a call. They'll be happy to work with you. I'm Ira Epstein. See you tomorrow.